And we're recording. All right, let's get started. Okay. Take the meeting of the South San Francisco Parking Place Commission for Tuesday, May 11 at uh, five o'clock, four minutes. Um, will please come to order. Uh, may I have a roll call? Okay. Yes, Vice Chairperson Monzon. Yes. Commissioner Mafadi. Present. And Chairperson Abarca. Yes, present. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, agenda review, Mr. Secretary, are there any changes to the order of the agenda? Uh, no changes unless the commissioners have a specific request to um, add to the agenda or to change from the agenda, uh, but otherwise we can move on. Okay. Uh, are there any public comments? No, we have not received any emails from the public and I don't believe we have anybody here to comment. Fantastic. Approval of the meeting minutes of the regular meeting, April 13, 2021. Uh, may I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of April 13, 2021. Okay, second. A second. Thank you. Uh, item from the staff. Hang on, sorry, did we wanna take a roll call for the meeting minutes or what are we, oh. what were we doing with? Yeah, let's go ahead and take a roll call. Let's do a call roll call. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, roll call. Okay, uh, sorry, one moment. Vice Chairperson Monzon. Yes. Commissioner Mafadi. Yes. And Chairperson Abarca. Yes. Okay, thank you, they are approved. Okay, the items from the staff. Parking revenue report. Sure, uh, let me, you can still see this. Um, uh, actually, uh, as we dis uh, discussed last uh, meeting, we're gonna move to monthly reports, revenue reports of, e of our parking meter transactions. Uh, throughout the city. Um, so the, the asterisk for this is that uh, Jen and I are about to get access to where they have this data reported and then we'll be able to figure out exactly the, the types of like data we're able to get out of this. So in the next uh, meeting, we'll be able to play around with it a little bit more and uh, provide additional kind of layers of information that I know has been missing from when we've done this report quarterly, uh, specifically like how, if we can figure out uh, how much of this is the garage or how much of this is, um, you know, located in the downtown or any, or, you know, like think, like things of that nature. So we'll, we'll figure out what we, what the system tells us and then we'll report back next month. But as uh, going back to last month, which is April, uh, as you see here, um, let's see if I can highlight this. Uh, <clears throat> total revenue for, collected at uh, parking meters um, throughout the city was about $52,768. Um, and there's still a pretty um, even distribution, about 51 to 48% of cash versus uh, credit card transactions. Um, at, at, at these parking meters um, and average revenue, that's the one we actually are more interested in seeing is um, you know per pole or per meter is about $90. So, which is kind of a bit of a, uh, we're seeing, yeah, we're just seeing a lot more um, transactions at this point. And I wanted to go back to, um, let's see. Go back to the beginning of the year, which is the, the uh, half of the first quarter. And as you can see, uh, it was about the same. Let me see. Let me zoom in real quick. Um, parking meter revenue has been growing. Uh, it, there was a big jump between February and March from thir you know, 39,000 to about 50,000. Um, 
and again like that you know in the middle of the pandemic or around this time and then there's I've you know a significant jump in revenue that we're seeing <clears throat> through March and a little bit of a slight increase in that same revenue for April with that 52768 uh, so uh, you know like things with things being uh, you know opening a lot more like uh, I think it was today that uh, San Mateo County has entered into the yellow tier so we can expect a you know a little bit more uh, bounce back in businesses and you know a little bit more use of more, of our parking meters across the city Yeah. And yeah, let me know if there are any questions or comments. Getting warmer. It's perfect. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> but yeah, things are looking up where we just keep seeing that trending and vaccination rates are good, California and in the county. So um, again, uh, with the reopening, uh, we have to keep in mind yellow tier today or as of midnight tonight, right? Um, for San Mateo County, but the target date is June 15 with the state for complete reopening of the economy. What that means <laughs> is still something we're all trying to decipher. Uh, and, you know, how do we, in, for businesses, like, does that mean fully reopen, no social distancing? Or, you know, is that something that's still being, uh, have, we have we still have to you know keep in mind so we'll, we'll we'll see we'll get more direction and more guidance from the state and the and the county as the as we move along towards that date so we're about like a month away from that now thank you grace sure thank you okay Coming. go back to the agenda okay 200 Linden Avenue, do we have some information for it, please? Yes, 200 Linden, just to hang on, give me, sorry, um, my, I'm also trying to be quick about it because uh, we have a lengthy presentation on the, the next meeting, <laughs> so, uh, but let me go back and Share the screen. 200 Linden, I uh, know there were some questions about this project and what was going on on the street side. This is a complete rendering. I, we, we got, Adina and I pulled this from the, um, the planning commission approval, approval or the approved plans for the project. This is what's gonna go into 200 at, sorry, at 200 Linden. Um, uh, two commercial spaces on the ground floor, 97 units. Um, there is a three level garage within this building because it's mostly residential. Um, so there is a, you know, an internal garage, which, you know, 97 units and there will be 97 spaces. Most of our residential projects, especially in the downtown are fully parked. So it's not expected to um, you know, spill over onto the streets or use our, our garage or use any kind of, you know, parking elsewhere uh, nearby. So that's something we can uh, count on, but there actually will, actually will be um, 109 parking spaces within this garage, within, which in, accounts for some spaces for the retail uses. Um, there are provisions for bicycling and, you um, in other modes, uh, they are looking to increase the width of the sidewalk as part of uh, the downtown station area plan uh, to about 15 feet. Um, and they are providing or restoring about four or so parking meters along uh, Linden. And I believe the question at the time was that what will happen to those parking spaces? Um, they will be res restored. Um, I believe Public Works has already gotten a uh, request to put the meters back because I think they're very close to completing that work. So we can expect them to be regular general parking meter spaces rather than 
anything else because one for let's say for the blue zones for handicap access um those are you know any any requirements for those for the building itself would be housed within their garage so there that's there's no requirement for that or or you know wait for that to be on the street so there's that and then uh for the businesses um you know, like it depends uh, what type of business goes in there, but they can always in the future elect and apply to make one of those on-street parking spaces into a commercial loading or a passenger loading. However, we're not anticipating that type of, um, you know, like an intense use that would need those things because the, the retail spaces, I think it's like 4,000 square feet and a thousand square feet, which is not that, not that big and won't have that much turnover. Like it won't be like a target you know, in downtown. Uh, so it, it, it won't necessitate removing general parking for yellow or white loading zones. So that's, yeah, so that's what we know about that project. So I, let me know if there are questions. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, how many gotta, uh, how many parking spaces are for the apartment? Like a one parking spaces for one uh, one unit. Mm -hmm. it's like, so it's ninety seven units and then ninety seven parking spaces. Yeah, it's one to one. That's the. You think that will be enough? Um, we can assume that that would be enough. I mean, it's fairly difficult to plan for projects and say one one unit will have multiple spaces. It's it's not it's not something that we. T typically would approve because um and it really depends on the the management company the property uh, managers that on the on the on controlling their their units with the parking spaces so it's typically that one-to-one -one or less so we're actually on the higher side by providing one parking space i, I don't like to say nothing but when we was uh building the apartment building for the retiree like everybody was saying that the retiree people will not uh, have cars or will not uh, drive uh, later everybody was surprised that uh, they don't have where to park uh, they are parking on the street it means that if you have units only you are thinking like uh, that the people which are living there will need only one parking spot seems to me a little bit i am saying only mm -hmm. okay yeah. you guys will be i think maybe unpleasantly surprised but um, i don't know because if uh, there will move uh, like a couples each mm -hmm. uh, person will need probably car but i can be wrong no, it, it's it's a fair comment. Uh, you know, like to to get people out of their cars is is one thing. Um, you know, like but you have to take that in consideration of, you know, what's happening and this being in downtown, um, with Caltrain being next door, you'd 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 want to hope that the people who would move in are are one car, you know, fa you know households with who would take transit to where they have to go to work. You know, so. Uh, but we'll we'll see what we'll see what happens. We're we're not at that stage yet. Yeah. Okay. Chris, so you said that there were four four uh, uh, meters back on Linden, huh? I believe so. It, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And um and and you said that the reason that the trees are on the street are because that is part of a downtown um, sidewalk widening. Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. Well, the the yes, because it's a uh, the part of the downtown station area plan. Like one of the goals was to make sure that you know, we have the, this downtown uh, for any new development. You know, contribute to making making sure and it transforms this area into a more walkable environment. Not that you know, because in, in cert, let, let's say for example on Grand, we have fairly fairly narrow um, sidewalks, and so this is you know to kind of inch us closer into having bigger sidewalks to make sure we have um you know you know a lot more places to walk for people and access you know and to be able to have this in the downtown basically sorry 
Chris, this may be a question more like on the planning commission side, but um, every time I see a building like this go up with over 90 units, I'm always in awe that we have so many newly constructed uh, apartment houses now. Was South San Francisco really that short of having available housing before uh, now? Yeah, I, I wish Adina was here to uh, to dis kind of describe that situation, but the answer is yes, <laughs> that uh, we were very much behind. And actually we are still behind in housing production, especially for the um, like low income to very low income, uh, you know, type of housing. Um, uh, yeah, so we were very much behind, but I think we've narrowed the gap a little bit with these, with the whole host of these new developments. Yeah. If I could add, Chris, mm -hmm. um, there's a um, regional housing allocation determined by the state. It's called ARENA numbers, where they look at the state as a whole. They look at you know, the people moving into the state, they look at housing as it exists, and they tell cities how much housing needs to be built in order to keep up with that rate. So where we stand now, we were given a few thousand several years ago as a goal to build towards, and we have started to catch up, but we're still thousands of units behind the recommended RENA numbers from the state. How do they determine that, Jen? Um, it's, a how very, many it's a very complex, I, I wouldn't want to speak out of turn, so I'm sorry to not be able to give you more information, but yeah, it's a whole, um, not a committee, but it's a department of the organization of housing from the state that does a long-term analysis over several years. And we are just receiving within these last few months, our goal for the next few years of what to build towards. And at some point, if cities are not able to keep up with their arena numbers, then there may be at the state level, some kind of action that then removes some of our ability and some of our regulation of how much we build in order to force cities to build up more. So you may have been hearing this a little bit in the news about how some cities turn down a transit oriented development. And because of that, a legal action happens and then the state can come in and require that they build that development anyways because they're not building enough housing elsewhere. That's not happening in South San Francisco. That's just the state is determining how much housing cities need to work towards building. And if cities are not doing that, they run the risk of some kind of state intervention so I know it seems a lot of buildings have gone up, especially in the downtown area, but we are still somewhat short of reaching the, the goal number set by the state. Oh, thank you, Jen. And what, what happens if, well, I'm not sure. I keep hearing there's this um, mass exodus of Californians over to Texas or someplace where it's um, less costly to live. What would happen if we were unable to fill all those apartments? They would just set vacant. Would that be a, a financial uh, burden on the city or the state? Or how, how does that work? I, I wouldn't I see that as a burden on the city. Yeah, <laughs> it would be a burden on the private property owner who can't lease out their, can't get to, you know, like 100% occupancy on their units but it's not something that we're you know we're we're concerned about i i would say sorry oh. I cut you off. yeah no that's okay i was going to echo the same thing that really it's the private property owner who if they're not able to lease all of their units then they're not the ones able to pay their you know mortgage loans or, or things like that typically what you see you know when units are being um when units are left unfilled, you know, that's the market, that's supply and demand. And that's typically when we see the pricing on apartments coming down and, and it becomes a little bit more affordable for more people. And I do want to say, I know we've heard a lot in the news about this exodus from California and a lot of people moving around. That's just what we're hearing now. And what may happen in a few years is the state department of housing, their arena numbers, they are analyzing what's happening right now. So when they come back to us in a few years with our next goal for RENA numbers, it may adjust down if they're really seeing that level of impact on housing. But right now, what we're hearing from the state is that 
even with a mass exodus of people, even with a significant building of more housing, we're still going to be short on housing units for people within the next few years. Okay, that's very informative. Thank you so much. Um, I have a question um, on the, you said that the, that if the two business, the two uh, retail are, you know, occupied, um, which zone would be uh, commercial? The area of the parking meters? Uh, none, none of them would be. So oh. it really depends on on the level of activity for that business. So let's let's say the four thousand square foot one on the ground floor. Um, you know, they they would have to, you know, command. Um, a large number of like truck traffic that they need loading constantly uh, for them to then for them them to require asking us the city for a commercial loading zone. Uh, but in looking at their you know like uh, like their their plans like the the, the rendering you're seeing, we, you know for every development review that we we look at for the city, we ask and we make sure that any kind of loading has to be done inside that garage. So they would have to, you know, they have their own loading, loading zones inside the garage already so that we don't ever touch at those parking spaces outside. So that's sort of like the, the kind of the, the caveat that we wanna kind of emphasize is that, you know, yeah, they might ask for it, but it's not, you know, unless they can, you know, accommodate even turn some of those, you know, existing commercial, because remember it's 97 parking spaces for the residents, 97 park, 97 units, 97 parking spaces, not touching those, but there's going to be 109 in that parking garage, which includes spaces for, you know, the, the commercial spaces or the commercial units. So we're not expecting them to then say, hey, we want that one of those Linden spaces to be a commercial loading zone. And we wouldn't necessarily approve that if we, we got that request. Yeah, then I have a question. It's, it's more like the, for the traffic, but probably we won't have this picture on the traffic commission. Um, for the garbage, um, that the, the pick up, to pick up the garbage would be on, on the lane, right? Uh, most likely. They pick up the, yeah. yeah. It, it really depends on, on how it's programmed. So we'll, we can look into, uh, usually the city does issue conditions of approval on what they're supposed to do. Garbage pickup days, they might have to, you know, just to have building, uh, you know, management to, to roll it out in the street so it could get picked up and then roll those bins back into, the, into their garbage areas. I mean, it, it depends on the, uh, what was conditioned there by public works and engineering as well. Okay, Tak, do I am understanding well that for this kind of commercial spaces, the delivery will drive to the garage, uh, will actually mm -hmm. deliver through the garage? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah, that would, that would be safer instead of having on the, on the, on the linden, on, on linden. Right, especially on on the uh, peak hours. Yeah, it yeah. depends what kind of company will be there, huh? Because yeah. we still don't know who will be moving in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You you said that it's but it's uh, for the two different company, four thousand and one thousand square mm -hmm. foot. Right. Yeah. It wouldn't be one five thousand, you know, square foot unit. It wouldn't be like that. Okay. Because it's, it's it's also meant to make sure that you we activate that space on the ground. So it, you know, like it's not like we're gonna then turn that into like an office, right? It's gonna, it is you know zoned for retail and it's gonna be commercial on the ground floor, uh, so it's gonna be some some kind of use like that. So, what it'll be, we'll see. Um, but there is exit on the lane, right? There is a entrance and exit for uh, some services for the building, or is all closed? I I haven't drive on that area. I'm just trying to compare to the to the senior project that they the senior on Miller the senior building. I don't think they have an access to the lane, and everything has to do has to be done on Miller, and it creates more traffic uh, concerns. And I'm just wondering if this is 
all brand new. If we, you know, um, I'm just trying to envision how the safety would be on that uh, lane. What is that? Uh, third lane, I think. Uh, actually, good question. We can send, you can forward you the plans for this that, that was approved by Planning Commission, and and you can, if there are other questions on that, you could just let us know. And because um, unfortunately, like neither myself or Jen worked on this project, uh, so we can't compen competently answer a lot of these more specific questions on the project. Thank you, Chris. Sure. So we move on. We have a uh, quite a few more. Okay, lot number fifteen, a lot number seventeen. Yeah. So uh, lot fifteen, lot seventeen. The update on that is. Let me see. Stop share again. Once more. Uh, around the third week or fourth, like towards the end of April, uh, the Rome project, uh, lot 15, um, began to grade the site and demolish, uh, start the demolition work for the mixed affordable housing and ground floor retail project at 201 to 19 Grand Avenue. Uh, so again, we've covered it before, September 7, 2017, uh, City Council approved the two purchase and sale agreements on uh, for two affordable housing agreements and the development agreement between the city and the developer for the properties. Uh, in July 2018, the developer received a housing authority um, of San Mateo County vouchers for 12 uh, below market rate units. Uh, which will provide approximately 1.5 million uh, to finance the project. So also in 2018, city council authorized the city, uh, city staff uh, to prepare documentation approving a the one year time extension, uh, yeah, one year time extension, uh, an adjustment in the affordable housing agreements AMI from 20% to 100%. And a, dem and a demolition pri uh, prior to conveyance. So that is uh, the work that's happening now at the site. Um, so that's gonna continue on uh, for, we, we don't have a time frame for this right now. So we can follow up with a time frame on that one. Uh, but the, but yeah, that, that's, that's the big update that they started construction that it's going on and um, if there are specific questions, we can try to field them for you. Again, my question is about the parking, All like right. a one apartment, one parking space, or there will be something different? It may be something different for affordable housing um, uh, units, uh, because that's, I believe it's 87, no? Sorry. I thought yeah, uh, I believe it's 87 affordable housing units. Um, what the, we'll have to communicate with you the, the project plans that were approved for that. Um, we weren't able to find them prior to the meeting. Uh, but um, you, typically what we've approved is for a residential projects, it's one-to-one. -one. Like that's really the most we've seen. I mean, like if you look at anywhere else, along the peninsula, usually they go, you know, for places like in the, like in a downtown where, you know, like they, a lot of places do even like half a parking space per one. So, but, you know, so, um, you know, with all the trends that we're um, seeing, like for projects that we approve is usually self park. Like that's the, that's the idea, which is one-to-one -one, that ratio. So, but we can confirm that for you. Yeah, it will be nice at least one to one. So, so what is this 1.33? For some reason, that number is stuck in my head when all the other projects that are complete right now, I think they were. Is that different because they are a little bit away from ground or? 1.33 in terms of the parking ratio? 
Yeah. I mean, that means that they're providing one and a third parking spaces per unit. It, yeah, it, it would usually mean that it's farther away from things that, you know, that you would need a car to get around. So that, that's the only reason to kind of go above the one-to-one -one ratio. You will park one third of the car there? Well, I mean, that means that like for if you have nine units, there's at least one parking space there for every for all those nine units to fight up, fight <laughs> for, right? Like, uh, well. <laughs> Still, I mean, like it's a way um, to it's a way to discourage folks to be to you know like hey, we could you know like folks already know parking is a problem, like the, it's hard to park on the street. It should it should always be discouraging to folks to you know then to get that second vehicle you know so that's sort of the the intent of at least doing the one to one like one point three it's a little it's a little generous actually so it, but it depends on where it is like maybe Sam Trans doesn't reach there quite as frequently there's not you know like the, there's no services no access and that that that's the the only reason I can point to for a one point three ratio. Okay, or not rent the apartment. This is the other discouraging, unfortunately, stuff. If I will not be able to park, like, uh, do I will rent the apartment at all? Right. But there, you know, there, I, there I, will I'm, be. I'm saying, like, yeah. I'm not, yeah. like, uh, I'm making point here. Right. Like, uh, because I will not drive by uh, motorcycle, honestly. Like, I was the. Uh, 33% the two wheels in my age anymore. <laughs> okay, move. Let's go moving to the parking garage number two. Yeah, that one, I uh, didn't actually have any uh, specific graphics for that one. Uh, but the, um, as we shared with you, the it went to, to a second, uh, not a second, a rescheduled, study session with city council. Um, sorry, the date escapes me right now, but um, um, so the, it's a little difficult because uh, if you watch that, uh, you, you, you saw a couple of the alternatives they were, they were looking to study, uh, but there was no definitive decision except to tell the, our consultant to keep studying and to then keep working on it and come back to uh, city Council with, uh, you know, some updates to the project itself. So there isn't anything for us to bring to you. But um, if you do want to hear more about what they brought to City Council, we could ask the project and the consultant to come to our next uh, meeting and kind of present this. But again, it's still, it's all a work in progress because they didn't land on anything specific at the study session with City Council. Okay. I would like to uh, add on that uh, just as a comment. As a parking place commission, we um, we um, we oversee the meters and the need of the parking. public parking, right? And uh, going back maybe uh, forty-five years ago, um, I think it was two thousand sixteen when the the study was was done, and if I recall well, was about 226 or 224 uh, parking spaces that we that they suggested that we will be needing in the future. Uh, what I was uh, very concerned is I did uh, listen the presentation to the city council, and I think all the ideas are great, but. As a parking place commissioner, I was I am concerned that the garage number two, that the alternatives that they were discussing with two floors or three floors, the addition on the corner, the annex, which is a great idea, but I think it deceives the need of the parking because if we needed at that time 224, 26 with um, annex of retail and having, you know, all the, uh, the, the what, what the council is envisioning, actually will, it doesn't make sense to invest 
to actually end up with 80 parking spaces. We rather don't do anything. <laughs> I mean, that was my perception because the idea we, we had already, we went through this one around 2018, 2019. And when they presented, there was no annex at that time. Now we have an annex that will bring a pre-K and also will bring some retail spaces besides the, um, the, the city employees. So if we start adding everything, the amount of public parking spaces to be used for the businesses, I think is less, if I'm not mistaken, it'll be maybe 80, right? And I don't think it's, what is, I mean, it, it, I don't know, a lot of investment and usage of, re, of real estate to end up with that amount. Uh, I'm just concerned as a parking place commissioner because we advocate for the uh, parking, public parking. And we understand that we live downtown. We understand that the idea of uh, encouraging people not to drive, I got it. However, it seems to me that the garage number two initial idea of having more public parking is deviating because now we're talking about having a pre-K and, and an annex building. Um, now we're having three things in one that will reduce the, the initial idea. Um, I just wanna put it on record that it is a concern um, to, you know, hopefully our leaders of the city will um, consider uh, all these details, right? Uh, uh, to summarize, the idea was public parking building. Now we're talking pre-K and an annex building for retail. So we're having three in one, actually four on one with a park on top, right? So um, just wanna let, leave it there that the initial idea was parking, just like the Miller, Miller garage is strictly public parking. We'll reach out to the 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 uh, folks working on the project and relay those concerns and share their share with them the the meeting minutes uh, from this meeting once we get to that point. But we'll we'll reach out to them and see and make sure that they kind of consider these uh, points. Yeah, the point is that it will not be enough. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I think 17 is 17, the one on Linden. I thought it was, uh, yes, is it Linden and Lux? No? Mm -hmm. okay. okay, any other questions? Otherwise, let's move on to items from the commission. Any items from the commission? And uh, just reminding you, uh, take this time to, if there is something more specific that you want on the agenda for next month, then please let us know now. Yeah, I would like to put in the, you know, the next agenda, if we can find out what is the future of lot number 13, is that going to be developed or is that going to be kept for um, their businesses on the 100 block and also for the visitors for all these new buildings or, you know, um, uh, we would like to know if that's going to be kept or it's already, um, it's going to be already developed. Uh, sorry, Commissioner Monza. Lot number 13. Not lot 13, okay. All right, we'll yeah. take a look and get back to you on that one. All right, thank you. Okay. Okay, any other items from commission? Oh. Nothing, okay. I just wanna thank Chris and Jen for all your hard work and, and a great presentation. Thank you. Okay, can I adjourn the meeting? Let's do it.
Okay, the meeting is now adjourned at uh, five o'clock, 44 minutes. Thank you. All right, we'll catch you on the next one. Yeah. Okay, thank you.